this when I go over it automatically. Use. I think before you had to click on look or something. Right, pretty cool. And we're opening up. Here we go. And we don't want to use the lamp until we need to because it has limited power. We're going to save the game. I have a gazillion save slots from back when I was testing it. Oh, geez, it's like a year ago. Wow. Yeah, the launch light rated it done really well on this game. We're in a small chamber beneath a 3x3 steel brick to the surface. A low crawl over cobble leads inwards to the rest. So you can kind of see this is where you came from. The loading screen is pretty quickly. Um, Ash trash cans, please keep area clean. Strange. Looks like others have been here before. So there is, you know, kind of, there's a thing with the gaming narratives, and I've worked on some computer games to develop myself and then at, at other companies. Um, there's a thing where it's, it's kind of like narrative that it's not didactic where people aren't talking to you. You're kind of, oh, look, okay, this means other people were here before. What's the story? It's kind of this kind of visual storytelling, the kind of, you know, like they say with screenplays, uh, with movies, right? Look, don't tell, same kind of thing. Oh, hey, Ken. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for coming in. I just saw your chat. It was a lot of fun working uh, on this in my limited capacity with the closed beta. And, um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, this is my first time doing the 2.0 version. We can do the map right here. You can see we're in the forest, going to the cobble crawl, and uh, very good. This is exciting. Yeah. Um, oh, it's been a bit. I hope you're doing well, Ken. It was a real pleasure to, to help with this game, growing up on the Sierra Online stuff and um, interviewing you for my podcast. That really meant a lot. So uh, thanks for tuning into the stream. Here. Okay, so we don't want to use the lantern until we have to. You're welcome. Uh, I guess since you're in the chat, I ha do have a question. So when, back in the day when um, you and Roberta had this game on the home computer, the original Colossal Cave, were there hint lines you can call at the time, or did you were there even BBSs you could go uh, to? Um, figure out where to go, or you just would have to spend hours and hours in the room trying to solve it. Oh, we got something here. There is a small wicker cage discarded nearby. A wicker cage. Let's pick it up. Let's add it to the inventory. Wicker cage. We'll need that later. Ah, Great. Okay, so there was no internet in those days, of course, um, and we had to figure out the hard way. And that is part of the reason why these old adventure games had a longer uh, play time, you know, is unless you went and bought a hint book or you couldn't afford one or whatever or didn't have friends with the same game, you would spend hours and hours in the same room and the same screen trying to solve these things. So it's pretty um, cool. I have no patience. This is, from again, from Ken Williams, the... Um, founder of uh, Cygnus and then also Sierra. This is so cool. Uh, I have no patience, he says. I lasted about 10 minutes. Roberta stuck with it and fought her way through the end. I'm kind of like with you, Ken. Like, my patience when I was younger, I think, because I had more time, was good. But at some point, you, you go, I go to the walkthrough. And uh, very early on when I was on the internet, and I was like 12 and like 94 or something, I, I read on, a, I think, the Adventure Game message boards, uh, news groups, uh, he who lives by the walkthrough dies by the walkthrough. Meaning that once you, it's kind of like the Pringles potato chips. Once you start, you can't stop. And uh, that's, that's always very, uh, very funny uh, to me. I've always remembered that ever since. The old save early, save often is true because you can die in these uh, games quite a bit. So let's fire up Brass lantern. the old lantern. Lamp on. Lantern is now lit. And we're going to go to the cave. Uh, not the cave, we're in the cave. Go to the little bridge. Very, very good. Oh, that's where I came in. Okay. I have not played this since I tested it. I see. Audio is muddy. Yes. I don't think it's your end. I had a microphone um, kind of malfunction. But, um, just sorry about that.
Okay, so put my notes on the screen. You are crawling over cobbles in a low passage. Very good. Let's keep on going. Crawling over the cobbles. So as it tells you new things, those are hints to where you can go. Oh, this is not the right way. But you can hear all of. Um, thanks, Ken. Yeah. Um, no, it's some issue with the microphone where by default Windows 11 it thinks it's in power saving mode with the microphone and it turns it off and I've turned it off in the control panel sound and that is not working either. Um, you can hold down the shift button to go faster. I think this is where I came from. Nope. This looks promising. Very, very good. There are a lot of kind of red herrings. You can't pick up things here on the floor, but that's really cool. Get to hear the bats. I mean, very atmospheric. These little sound design touches really add a lot. Ah, okay. Here we go. Because this is the... Um, we got to get the, um, the wand. There's no use for that here. This wand is... Oh, come on very important in the game, the Black Rod. Black Rod. And you can use it to do spells, such as this one right here, X, Y, Z, Z, Y, which it will transport you back to the home base of the cabin. It says Zizzy. And if we go to thing, it's right here. Zizzy. Um, in an original version of the game when it was in beta, I don't think it did the spell on the notepad, and um, once that was added, I think that's something that made the interface better. So, that's all cool. Oh, come on. Why am I going the wrong way? Keep on going. And they had to make like the maps bigger in this game too, which makes sense because in the text one you can really go through it quite quickly because it's just north, south, east, and west. Or am I just going in circles? Possibly. Should just use the map. I'm going south. I need to be going west, of course. Don't forget to save the game. Ha! Good, yeah, good tip here. So don't forget to save the game from time to time. You could be brought to life, but I think it's only three times or something, and then you, there's no more continues. It's a limited amount. Uh, you go all the way back to the wall house. Blame Don Woods, the, one of the original developers for that one. If you save the game, you can get going again. Good point. So I'm going west. go past here, but we have to go back and over. Let's see. I think this is it. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Yeah, this is the kind of slippery part. You can fall off and die. Good spot to save. Um, I do recall I'm aware of saved games. That's interesting. Yeah, people take the option to get brought to life. I think maybe if you didn't grow up with um, like King's Quest or, or some of those games, you don't have the instinct to save every five seconds or like when using Microsoft Word or something and your computers would crash a lot or, or what have you. But yes, yeah, saving is very important. And you can hear more of like this kind of echoey sound in the background. And yeah, uh, probably right, not used to save and restore. I mean, I still, when I, I um, I'm a technical writer at my day job, and when I'm doing these things, I um, 
in Google Docs a lot or Confluence, I, I always want to instinctively click a save button, but they, they don't exist. It just saves automatically all the time. And that's quite, uh, quite different. And here is our early puzzle, famous one, the bird right? The was unafraid when you enter it, but as you approach, it becomes disturbed. Ah, okay, we gotta back up. Oh, I see. We'll back up. Okay, so what are we gonna do? He's afraid of the rod. Black rod. So you're gonna drop. There's a few puzzles like this where you have to drop and pick up things. We're gonna use this. Okay. Wiggle cage on the bird. You have captured the bird. He disappeared, but he's in here. Bird in a cage. And you can see it rotating in this graphic. Um, yeah, w when it's doing the graphic spinning around like that. Set of keys. Hasty home. And I like it. It does these descriptions, but of course, in in the old version or in the uh, original text adventure, you'd have to you know type INV to look at inventory and, and do look at type look at food, and it would say, oh, it's tasty food or whatever it is. So I mean I do enjoy the fidelity of um, of this to the original, and I think that video at the beginning really stresses the uh, importance of that. And we want to pick up the rod again. We can see we're almost full up, and we don't have any treasure, but we'll find something. So we're gonna go back ah, to here. Let's see, pull open the map. Right, you sort of hug the wall. Okay, got it. Oh, I see. We go through the bird chamber. Whoops. It's been a while. Oh, it's going to load. Really good, um, yeah, good improvements on the loading time there. At your feet is a small pit breeding traces of mist. A white mist, usually water, seen from time to time in caverns. It can be found anywhere, but is frequently a sign of the deep pit leading down to water. Oh, wow, that's really cool, Ken. I didn't know that. Yeah, so he's saying right here in the inventory screen, it is it is not 3D imagery doing it in real time. It is, uh, he said, I could not get 3D images to display correctly, so I cheated and did 2D sprites. It was a hack, but no one has noticed. I certainly didn't, and it's a really smooth scrolling animation. And I'm reminded a little bit of in um, the one you did, the first Phantasmagoria game, you could pull up items and then kind of like rotate it with your mouse in 3D. And sometimes there would be, um, like on the back of a painting, maybe you could pull the back of the painting and open it. Uh, and and things. And here, I mean, that it's 2D makes sense and interesting. Oh, this is great. Okay, on the VR version, a different engineer, John West, did it as 3D, and those ones are true 3D. Well, I really like how these look here for the 2D and um, yeah that's a good kind of bit of movement with the items of course you know and from the original design of the game because you have food and you get hungry and you eat food or give food to people that's a bit like the RPGs yeah Phantasmagoria held up well Roberta played through it recently and had a blast yeah I think I saw what there's the clip where she was um, she was on the Conversations with Curtis, which is that show with the oh, um, one of the act, the main actor from Phantasmagoria Two has been ta talking to a lot of game designers and people, and, and Roberta was on that with the oh, uh, the I can't think of her name, the star of Phantasmagoria One, and and that's cool that she played through it recently and uh, and all of that, and it would be um, quite something if the master tapes existed to see what AI upscaling could do with those uh, with the video clips. But yeah, there's not, I mean, Haunted House, that's pretty classic sort of storytelling. I mean, this is great. Yeah, you didn't have all this mist and fog in the 1.0 version. It's adding a lot of atmosphere. The cave itself is a character uh, in these games. So, no, this is fun. Okay. Uh-oh. But he can't kill you this first time. Or if I did, I should have saved, yeah. But now we get this item, and we're already... Full up, right. That's right, yep, she was Victoria Morcel, thank you, on Conversations with Curtis, and played with Game Grumps. First time in 30 years. First time Roberta has played uh, Fantasmic Rail 1 in 30 years. Wow. Yeah, that, that's that's quite something, because those are pretty long games, even if you know what you're doing, and that, that first Fantasmagoria, I believe, was seven CDs at the time. That was a big thing in the marketing. 
um, and it got coverage in a lot of um, mainstream magazines too. You, the rating system was fairly new. It was an M-rated game. CD-ROMs, you know, the CD uh, computing was CD-ROMs on computers and multimedia, you know, gaming and stuff was was very very uh, big and kind of new. So it was getting a lot of uh, broad coverage in the press. And I think back in the day, I owned Gabriel Knight 2, and my friend had Phantasmagoria 1, and we traded our games sometimes to play each other's games. But I have purchased it since then. 95, yeah, that sounds about right. And um, my computer could run it, but barely. It was a 486, uh, 66 megahertz. Why do I remember this shit? Uh, 8 megabytes of RAM, double speed CD ROM. Um, so a little bit hokey, but with, you know, with the Super VGA monitor and stuff, um, it could. It did the job well enough. Uh, so here we go. Down into the caves. I miss those days. Yeah, that's cool, Ken. Yeah, I do too. It's, um, so many games are just a lot different, and I think overall game developers took more, more chances. There's a lot of unique things. and But also, like, the, the resolution was less, I think, so... And you had sound cards, and I mean, you could do a lot with the mixture of technology. Um, and I think that the limitations can make um, for, for innovation. You don't, uh, I think of, what, oh, the filmmaker, I'll oh, be quiet. No, that's fine. I know, we can, ch we can chat, that's cool. Um, this is great. You don't need to be quiet at all. But the, um, but yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, the filmmaker Robert Rodriguez uh, who did Desperado and stuff talks about a lot of big Hollywood movies have the problem with uh, drinking from the, the fire hose with the money and you don't, if you have a limited amount of money it kind of forces innovation is in the Hall of the Mountain King right here You're in the Hall of the Mountain King. very good the passages often fly corrections. this looks inspired by the Venus of Willendorf statue right here and we should save again. We got 57 points. Let's see here. What am I doing? Head down the stairs. Yes. Yeah. Classic bit of music. Um, Could this have been the king's throne? Use and how do I get in here? Okay. You're in the hall of the mountain. Nope. The passages often fly corrections. We'll go south. A huge oh. green fierce snake. Little bird in a cage. So now we'll use this to scare the bird. Not scare the bird, scare the snake. The little bird attacks the green snake, and in an astounding flurry, drives the snake away. Uh, the narrator in the game is um, excellent. I don't have his name in front of me, but it, he has, you know, it's kind of like a Monty Python quality, a bit tongue in cheek, a bit sort of sarcastic but not as much as um stuff with uh you know not as much as like uh oh gary owens and space quest where it's like oh what a pantaloon right you know the kind of humor ah okay so huge debate behind the scenes where people wanted non-stop music for Brody held firm if you wanted more music occasionally thinking it would be more special when it plays um yeah that's an interesting point i like how the music is limited because it makes it more special when it does come and it kind of signifies you're advancing uh, a big, you know, the next big chapter, so to speak, in, in the game. You you made a big accomplishment. The music is a reward, like the um, like the video clips would be in uh, Phantasmagoria and so forth. And those kind of cutscenes. Oh, what do we have here? That won't work here. Oh, we have the thing. Yes, yes. So now inventory is full up, and we can't. I don't think we can do it in this room, right? Zizzy. Nothing happens. Yep. Ah, there it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, John Cryer is awesome. Ken says, when he says the opening line of the game, even though I've heard it a thousand times before, I still love it. You are standing before... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the birth of the adventure game genre, isn't it? It is about exploration, and you're kind of dumped in this world, in this case, um, you know, outside of the... Uh, the kind of uh, the cabin or the house or whatever it is, and, it's, and you kind of like, you know, go for it. You know, the, the world is your oyster. And that's something really quite fun here. There we go. Now let's... 
Take a look here. Sorry, we need to drop something before you can. So we need to drop water. something. We can of water. drop the water. We don't need yet. Sorry, sorry, we need to drop something before you. Oh, I see. Dropping things you're carrying requires a nice wide. I was too close to the statue, so I couldn't drop stuff. Okay, not a problem, Ken. Thanks so much. Uh, Rever is making tacos where I have to open the wine, fry the tortillas. Thanks, I appreciate it. I'll um, send you a link to this if, if you want, and you'll tell Roberta I said hi, and I'm having a lot of fun playing Colossal Cave 2.0. That was a lot of fun. I did not expect Kim to jump in, and that was uh, very flattering. And it makes me wish my microphone was working better. <laughs> So, um, yeah, what a nice surprise. Absolutely. Thanks for playing. Uh, okay, F. Marcus, thank you for replay. Sounds great. Perfect. So we're going to go through here. Let's see what we're doing. Going to go back. I think this is where we came from. Maybe not. Uh, if we look in the map, we've kind of wandered around. It's easy to get lost in the cave because it's a cave. But there you go. And uh, very good. So we're here where it highlights crossover junction. Maze different. This is a really hard maze in the game. We don't want to do it because um, I'll get lost and die. Uh, however, I want to go to the Y2 room, um, so I will double back, go east and then north. So these kind of magical sound effects were not in 1.0, and um, we're going to drop something else here too. Black rod. Tasty food. The food will drop. Nice on the map, it is showing where I drop things with the, the graphics, so we visually know where stuff is because you got to drop around, uh, kind of like Hansel and Gretel dropping the cookies, or excuse me, the breadcrumbs as they're going through the forest so they don't get lost. Ooh. Hear the word clue. It says, it says, why two? Why two, indeed. So from here, if we look here now, we get two. Clue. clue warps you to, the spells in general just warp you to different rooms, but X, Y, Z, Z, Y, Zizzy. Zizzy. And uh, if you play Return to Monkey Island, there is a, uh, the, the latest Monkey Island game, there's a cave. Um, that has big homages to Colossal Cave Adventure, and uh, Guybrush Threeplug literally says, X, Y, Z, Z, Y, and, and you get to transport to the beginning of the cave, and it um, is a delightful sort of old-school maze. Zizzy. Zizzy. There's no use for that here. Oh, come on. I have to do it, I think, it, let's just backtrack, screw it, and just go to the beginning, which is fine. Uh, South, east, okay, yeah, 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 we'll do that. It's been too long, I don't remember where you can use the different spells. Blah, 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 blah. All right. We're going to go east. East, my son, through the magic caves. Oh, come on. Sometimes you get stuck on your geometry a little bit here. This is where we got the birdie, remember? Can 
way through the cave, and we're gonna go back and drop off the treasure. If you look, precious brass lantern, brass lantern, brass lantern. You have turned off. It is now pitch dark. If you proceed, you will most likely fall into. Uh oh. Brass, brass That's lantern. Right. The so if you don't lit. keep the lantern on, you will just take a few hits and like die automatically. In Zork, it was, you know, what, you'd be eaten by a Gru, you know. Um, okay, gotta go east. Oh, come on. Blah, 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 blah. Keep going east, find the up exit, and we'll turn this off to save some. You have turned off the lantern. It's very dark as you can see. Oh, yep. Perfect. You're in a small chamber beneath a pit. There's nothing to do with it. That won't work here. That is you there's no there's no use for that here. That won't work here. Open portals is above you. Oh, come on. You can get out the... Come on, you can... You can climb up this damn thing, can't you? Oh, oh I see. If you try to do it while looking up, you can't, but... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you missed it earlier, you know, feel free to look at the chat and... Um, Apologies for the audio. It's kind of on the fritz of my uh, computer at the moment. I figured that fixed. But it is uh, got the Ken Williams, the uh, co-founder of Cygnus uh, Entertainment and um, the original Sierra Online. And, you know, he made this game with uh, his wife Roberta, many games I spent, and perhaps you even spent your childhood enjoying. So it was great to get an insider perspective on the game. And I worked a little bit on the game myself, but in a pretty limited capacity doing the closed beta. And there's the house. So now we're going to drop off stuff, right? On the table. So it's like coins. place. Not drop, but when you place, it goes automatically. It's kind of a Disney touch, right? It plays the sound effect. It didn't really have as much of those sound effects um, in the original version. I'm really impressed with, with what they've done. It's like a lot of ease of use stuff that if you didn't play uh, 1.0, this new Colossal Cave, um, you would have missed something. Jewelry. So now we can see our score is up. We're 93 out of 350 points. We'll, we'll go for a bit more here. A bit more. I'm going to check something one second. Go back to the game. Exit. Change. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Yep, we can do that. You are inside a well house. So if we do, Zizzy. I think that works here. Zizzy. Yep. You feel a strange pulling sensation. Strange pulling sensation. Is that a sex joke? Maybe. Could be. It's awful lonely in the cave. So where does that take us to? It is now pitch, pitch black. Lantern. The lantern is now lit. Ah, I see. We can only use it where it says at the Zizzy Stone, of course. So gonna go west. Blah blah blah. Okay. And I think, you know, when I, I haven't played this game um, much since I did the, the closed beta for it, right? But when you keep on going, what's really cool is... Going around. We're gonna do the stuff here with the. Okay, yeah. So we looked. What we dropped was the food and the water. We don't need that for a little bit here. 
that's in a different part, uh, kind of in the bed quilt section, I think. But now we're going to do some of this with the crystal bridge. And it didn't do this glowing effect here. I, I recall that distinctly, and you can hear kind of the water. Again, it's these atmospheric stuff. And I, I've been in uh, Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico, and I did spelunking um, once in Boy Scouts, and it was a pretty traumatizing experience, to be honest, because you're on your stomach. There's people on either side of you. You can feel condensation of everyone. And um, nobody had any panic attacks, but we did have a scoutmaster uh, who was um, a, a larger fella get stuck. And so everyone had to push in his butt to get through. It was like a joke out of The Simpsons. It was quite funny. So here. There must be a way to cross this fissure. So how do you cross the fissure? Black rod. Use the bat. You know, if you went in doubt, use the magic rod. A crystal bridge spans the fissure. Yeah, this is really cool. It has like this kind of trippy thing going on. Much. It looked more like an ice uh, bridge in the beginning. But yeah, playing through. Uh, doing the closed beta test for this, um, it's quite, it was, this was like the first moment where I'm like, oh, this is, okay, I kind of see what they're doing here, because it's a real kind of magical moment where it's like, oh, I, I, I solved a puzzle, and with the graphics and the sound, and, you know, it kind of creates something that the original Colossal uh, Cave Adventure is, is great, but, you know, it kind of takes advantage of the graphics and the sound and the extra stuff in, the, in this new version, so... Here we go. Up, oh, we got a dwarf. We want to collect the diamonds. Uh oh, we got to use the axe on him, right? Oh, he disappeared. Good. Better save the game. Several diamonds. Several diamonds. Yeah. Um, he sounds a brass lantern. He almost sounds a little bit like John Rhys Davies, doesn't he? Um, Jason Cryer, the voice actor. Several diamonds. Indiana, diamonds. we had bad dates, Indiana. I know that character from Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's one of those. Um, okay, so what do we have here? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking up something here in this hint guide. Good coins. Hmm. Oh, I see. Yep, so we're going to go to the bed quilt stuff, which we're here in the Hall of Mists. And uh, yeah, we're going to be going west and then north, which is why those compass things are so useful. And down further to the cave. I mean, yeah, this feels a bit like the, the Hobbit or something, right? And we're going and seeing what's happening. But as a threatening dwarf, uh oh, a sharp knife is thrown. It hit like a dwarf's axe. You have attacked a little dwarf, but he has dodged out of the way. So yeah, you got to pick up the axe each time, and I should have been saving more often because, um, especially, I don't know if they made this easier or not, but in the original game, there's a pretty high chance the dwarf would just kill you automatically, and and death, uh, you know, being able to die that easy is something that was really, really common in older games. And I like that it keeps it. It keeps it a bit shocking, a bit on your toes. Um, not that the game is like a relaxed pace necessarily, but it's doing its own thing. Oh, come on. I didn't want to do this part. Go to the west. La. I see. Go back to the mountain king. What am I doing? No, I want to go east, I think. Okay, there we go. I am not in bed quilt. I'm getting all lost. I'm going to go north and then east. Part of the game is getting lost, right?
go east, we'll get to the altar zone, which is that point here. There it is. Okay, altar zone. Good. Let's save. That nice confirmation save sound effect is always good. We can pick up the water. We'll need that. Go up north to where we left the food. That's not where I want to go. I want to go north, my friends. So he says, yeah. He says plu every time in the Wandado version. It sometimes was tricky to get plu to trigger. That's a bug that got fixed, which is nice. Taste plu. And it's it's a hint again, right? Like you use the spells typically, you know, where these things are written or said. Uh, so it's kind of, and it this warps you back plu. to. You feel a strange pulling. Heaven forbid we go back to the area the, the old cabin in the well house. well house excuse me help if I get the name Central right diamonds. it'd be nice if it said that he got blah 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 of how many treasures um, but it doesn't but when it's all filled up it feels nice because you can look at it and there's a visual thing of like oh look at all the progress I've made Visit. no Blue. Blue. You feel a strange pulling sensation. You're back in the Y2 room. So now we do down to the bed quilt, right? Do -do 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 -do. But as a threatening dwarf, oh, shit. a sharp knife is thrown. It got you. Damn it. <laughs> That's why you save, right? Oh dear. You seem to have been ousted. So this is a good point, right? So when you die, it does say you've scored this many points using how many turn. I mean, the turn things in the original game, every action you did, look, eat, whatever, uh, you know, counted as a turn. And yet, um, because it's graphics uh, in this one, I don't know quite how they do that part. So we will go back to uh, here. And we're good, and we're going to... Wolf, wolf's axe. So a good hint is, like, always have the axe on use. That way, if you see a dwarf, you can toss an axe at him. Because it, it is a kind of a random encounter, right, when they show up. Kind of go south and then down. 